So, back to the game though, the game proper. We do have very strong openings coming in from the Lobster team. Which is, of course, 400 and Zenfer. And the GBC team managing to maintain their territory eventually. It looks like that is still Lobster Team taking most of the map. Lobster Team doing very well here. They know what they want, but nice, some nice Scorcher raids to the north to deal with that, to stop Lobster Team from expanding as much as they'd like. Still, economic advantage goes to the Lobster Team as six minutes into the game. Still catching up, and it should be about nine minutes by the time we actually get to the game proper. And by the nine minute mark, GBC has pretty much taken the middle of the map. And it's starting to get the economy into their favor. Lobster's still getting the economic advantage, but they are using a lot of it for excess. And we've caught up. Strider Hub being built for the Lobster to deal with their excess economy. GBC having to deal with some pesky little raids over to the northwest. Scorch is getting rid of a few more metal extractors. So at this point, Hokomoko went for heavy tanks. Not at all surprising, though we don't see them go for the vehicles as often as we do bots. But heavy tanks, that's what they go for. And Enrique with the gunships and light vehicles. Well, 400 went for light vehicles and adding air factory. Well, Zenfer with the hovercrafts. We are seeing more hovercrafts. I only ever see hovercrafts in tournaments, I've noticed. it's That's pretty much it. That's pretty much been how it goes. I mean... I don't see them oftentimes just in standard matches, but people will pull them out in tournaments. It might be a 2v2 thing. I don't want, I don't cast a lot of 2v2 replays. So it, that could very well be the reason. Anyhow, it does appear that GBC is managing to stabilize somewhat around the two-fifths line. Like two-fifths from the west of the map. Still having a bit of a hard time. Just setting that up, but looks like Lobster is... Lobster basically just needs one good push. You caught up, Parzival? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. <laughs> Can't really blame... Hokomoko for not being able to push... Pop, because that's basically pork. Hmm... Yeah, you have all the defenses, you have all the defenders, then on top of that you have the solar wall right behind it, so good luck getting around that. Although I feel like Hokomoko just needs to hold. The push side needs to be the south side. The real problem, of course, is going to be... There's the Dante. There's that Dante, that is what they're looking for. Need to get rid of that pretty quickly. They don't, of course, that is going to be game. And a lot of terraforming coming in from Zenfer. Very careful to make sure that everything is protected as much as possible. Oh! Oh, apparently I was mistaken. Anakin and Hokomoko actually lost their first game, not 400 and Zen for... So, Lobster Team is... Yeah, they are 1-0. Sorry, one sec. I'm gonna have to just deal with that. And let's see. All right. Sorry about that. So yeah, Lobster Team has apparently gotten the first win. So GBC is coming from behind at this point and actually is not doing so well. So it looks like we are going to see a bronze match between Anakin. The, the match I was looking for, the one I said was the main match, the main event, is going to be the bronze match from the looks of it. Unless there is some turnaround for GBC and they are getting their economy back. They're getting some nice reclaim. They're still 30 metal per second behind though. It's not quite halfway, but they're not doing so hot. And once that Dante For sure is, is coming in. Hmm? Sorry. What was that? Scorcher raids. Ah, uh, yes, the Scorchers, indeed. Which I was actually looking at while you were mentioning it. So, yes, that Scorcher raid is mostly getting some production right now. Oh, there we go, there we go. The game's getting some real damage. Or potentially, very shortly, we'll be able to get a few metal extractors. No, in fact, not really focusing on that. Surprisingly enough, 400 kind of getting one metal extractor and just letting it go. Moving on more to the main production structures. I don't think they're going to deal a whole lot of damage. They might be able to get rid of the gunship plant. No, not even. They can't hang around. So, a kind of small raid. Those Scorcher raids were not really what I expected. 
Maybe get rid of another 5 metal per second. I mean, that's still meaningful. That's still not nothing. That's 10 metal per second that's been destroyed right there. So yeah, Lobster just holding on to their advantage. Hokomoko losing their entire North contingent. So really, despite the fact that that raid was only marginally effective... No, it wasn't marginally. Never mind. That actually raid was far more effective than I'm giving it credit for. It's still going on. Never mind. There's... Yeah, this is... That's basically just sealing the deal at this point. The only thing left for the GBC right now is their army. And if they lose that, well... That's 2-0, and they're on to the bronze match against Google Frog and Orphelius. Looks like that's likely to happen, too. Nice softening up by the Phoenixes, which will likely be followed up very shortly by pretty much all these scalpels coming in. The one thing is Zenfer doesn't have a huge amount of forces. Some scalpels, some halberds. A lot of Scorches coming in from, Anor sorry, from 400. Which makes sense. Although, admittedly, against levelers, not really. That is the one thing that doesn't make that much sense. That's what the scalpels are for. And indeed, oh, the scalpels we got the Dante do out. Oh yeah, there's that Dante. There it is, it is in fact built. So we have the Dante going, and with that, we should be seeing the final push. The Dante and the Scorchers, all the heat rays coming in here, getting rid of the Reapers. The Reapers aren't really the real threat, though. The real threat has been the levelers. But even then, those levelers are completely out of position to deal with that attack. And dead. Mostly dead, actually. There's like one leveler left. Two levelers. Neither of which are anywhere near the Dante. Really, it was the Scorchers that they're a threat for. So yeah, this should basically be the push that breaks that that just finishes the game. And finishes the semifinals. I mean, one small counter push attempt from Anarchid. One last ditch effort. No real damage can be dealt with this though. I mean, three Raptors. They can get rid of the Scorchers, they can do some scouting, figure out what's going on, but they're not going to be able to get rid of more than one or two Metal Extractors, and they need... GBC kind of needs to get rid of all of them. And then somehow drain Metal... Well, I guess kill the army. And then reclaim the army. And then kill the army again. And at that point, they'll be roughly even. That's kind of how this game has been going. And Anarchid still trying to keep holding on... Does not want to throw in the towel, being very much like Orphelius here. Holding very much on. But I don't think there's going to be much they can do here. At this point, Lobster Team going in from the north as well. And that's that's it. Anarchid realizes there's no way. So that's it. Anarchid, Aokomoko going to the bronze match against Google Frog and Orphelius. Hmm. I'm curious how that's going to play out without as much possibility of cheese. But, granted, they could still have a lot of strong cheese. And we did see that Google Frog and Orphelius are fairly vulnerable to heavy raiding. But 400 and Zenfer... I'm not sure how Zenfer's been playing. Actually, no, that's not relevant. Anarchid and Hokomoko. Anarchid has been fairly... They've been a fairly aggressive team. So we'll see how that goes. I am curious. But yes, Bronze Match comes first, so Bronze Match is next. I'm not sure what map that is on. I will check. It is... I have no idea. Wanderlust, probably. The, la the rounds aren't labeled well, so I'm just going to guess it's Wanderlust, and we'll go from there. Ah, oh, darn it. Alright, well, anyway, Anarchid and Hokomoko... I'm really kind of surprised. It's just the way this is going, it's... All upsets. This tournament has been nothing but upsets. I'm not mad or anything, it's just... It's the only way I can really describe it. It's That's all it's been. Is surprise after surprise after surprise. Huh. Man, I guess you weren't around for the Swiss part, but yeah. It was surprising then too. So at this point, we're just waiting on Orphelius, and Orphelius is here, so just waiting on everything to be set up for the teams. And I'm pretty sure it is... 
I'm pretty sure this is going to be Wanderlust. Which... Hmm. This point, the advantage for that one. I'm kind of... I'm leaning on Anarchid and Hokomoko. I mean, Anarchid and Hokomoko completely won the Swiss part of the tournament. Like, completely took that. But at the same time, that was because the aggression really paid off. I mean, when you're dealing with okay. best of three, it's less cheesy. Sorry, you, you back? I've been here. <laughs> okay, just you haven't been commenting. Yeah, my mic has a bit of a delay on it. So by the time I actually say something, you're saying something. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll bear that in mind. Okay, it's no problem. Okay, we are indeed on Wanderlust. I like this map too. There we go, Anarchid and Okamoko. Ay. So what do you think? Aggression or Google Frog and Orphelius? Percival? Yeah. I said, what, who do you think 